Dumb and Dumber, that one scene where right. you're in the van with that guy and like, you want to hear the most obnoxious noise in the world? <laughs> Amy Fix says she's a favorite of mine. Looking forward to part three. All right. So today. We are on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll roll it out in a second. Let me just make sure everything's cool. So today we got a third part, man. The, uh, the third part <laughs> in counting. Uh, Isabella Green. Sedona soul speaking machine. <laughs> He's not me. Yeah. Um, nice. But yeah, you know, as Isabella wants to talk about some stuff today. And I'm all for soul that. Speaking machine. I'm all for that. Okay. So let's give it a little bit more time. 22 people in the house. Who we got here? Amy Fix, I said, Michelle Good, Yvonne down in Tasmania, Allison Clausen. Delia Flores, Doreen Kinney, thank you, Doreen, uh, and everyone else for your continued love and support and contribution to keep us. Hi, ladies. Us Hi, guys. <laughs> Angel Divine, Mary Lou, Shaz Hargreaves, Tamara Jean, Ananda, the Blissful Heart, Gadsden. Sasha All right. Grace is in the house. Sasha Grace, got to talk to you later for sure. <laughs> Get. Give a Kimmy drug skull. Hello, how are you? Valerie Peterman, how are you? Love Isabella. Ask her if she can talk Ryan and Alexander to have a conversation with you. Jenny Williams, Laws Mitchell, Cricket Holden, Luci uh, Alibova. Alibova. Uh, Vova. Uh, Michael Runyon, <laughs> <laughs> Michael where you been? Michael Runyon, where you been? I hadn't seen you in a long time. Sarah Bishop, the divine goddess Morgan Lee. All right. Can't wait to get my hands on that. <laughs> Brent, <laughs> Hi, Morgan. <laughs> Brendan RB, Michelle Weisenberger, Donna Schultz, Karen Fenstermacher, Vidalia Barnett, longtime acquaintance, Katarina Delmore, Lee Oscar J. Smith, and Mariana Teopra. 41 people in the house. We have a special show today. Third time Isabella Green is on. You're the only show I'm doing today. <clears throat> Oh, cool. So yes. I get all this energy yeah. now. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, if these shows, last thing, if these shows resonate with you, please share. We are doing a great job of staying above the, the algorithms of Facebook. Yeah. Um, every one of the shows has been pulling 50 to 100 plus people. And uh, and I thank you for that. We all thank you for that. Morgan, all of G, everybody, you, thank yourself because we're all part of the same thing. Thank you, Isabella, for joining us. I'm going to share through the network. I'll let you roll it out. You want to talk about the Equinox. <laughs> well, I'm sure everyone talked about the Equinox by now. Can you believe that it was just three days ago? Doesn't it feel like six months? <laughs> <laughs> right? A month. Uh, Man. I was at the uh, Sedona Yoga Festival, both speaking and participating uh, on, at the time, building towards the Equinox. And a lot of stuff came up. And one of the things that were very heavily covered by just about every speaker that I heard and my own guidance, too, was balance. And I would like to take a look at different aspects of balance. Uh, we had balance between the upper and lower centers, balance between uh, multidimensional connection and earth connection, balance between the masculine and the feminine. And that's where I would like you to get involved because you have a different perspective on this uh, than myself, which I would like to share. And so I woke up on the day of the equinox in the morning uh, after my massive meditations, I went and, and uh, I greeted the sun. And no, my, normally, my equinox experience is uh, downloading past lives and interdimensional stuff and just doing all kinds of stuff in the ethers, you know, outside of this dimension. And here, all of a sudden, uh, I wake up with the guidance oh, create a group uh, for single women, support group. That. Yeah, yeah. Support group for single women. And, you know, I'm not much of a, you know, into girl talk or any of that stuff. And uh, I'm asking, what, it, what, create group, what is this all about? And that guided, and then I started downloading, like, write this and say this, and this is what it's for. And it would not let go of me until I actually went ahead and did it. And, yeah. 
it turned out to be an amazing space that I'm now sharing with a few. It's a closed group. And it's turning out to be a space of support for women who actually want to be single. The ones who are uh, empowered in the space of being single. We only have support for women who are single in you know, in the way of, oh, you got to find a man who will help you, will support you in that. But uh, as far as supporting women who actually choose to be single or want to be single or empowered within that space, um, I am an, I'm a, one of those women because I personally feel that I have embodied and created balance within me, uh, within myself, between the inner masculine and the inner feminine. I dream... Uh, as a male and female both. And I, and, but most of the time it's genderless, right? Don't you, how are your dreams? Are your dreams genderless or are you always in a male form? Man, when I, when I dream, I'm always Todd. Ah, you know? okay. I'm just, I'm just, and I'm just Todd. I was thinking about that today too. When I got, I got up this morning before the sun came up and I went down to Kapa, I went down to the beach and, uh, and I, I got the download because um, mine was like yours. Mine was like everybody's. It was just stuff coming, you know, mm -hmm. one thing after another, physical apparitions, all kinds of stuff. Right. But today was a very clear thing. And I was going down the, the mountain and I felt like I was in a dream. Right. It felt oh, like the energy of a dream. And, and I heard from the you, me, we, and it, you know, I heard this is what it's going to be like. Oh my God. And, yeah. And and then I said, okay. I said, okay, I get that. I mean, that, that, that is easy to, to accept and, and understand and comprehend. And then I said, am I going to have, am I going to have access like conscious access to every part of me? And, and I heard very distinctly and more and more by each moment. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, I had a very similar experience this morning too, and I wanted to talk about dream time also, but kind of tie it into uh, the subject of embodying the inner masculine and the inner feminine within the same vessel. When mm -hmm. we have dreams, I normally don't even know if I'm a male or a female in a dream, but then I look have at ever, my- Have you ever just taken a look? Well, and then I, when I take a look, then, you know, very often uh, I know which one because I see my clothes, right? Yeah. That what, what the way I'm dressed, but uh, it feels genderless in the, yeah. in the dream all, all the time. And I feel that I have embodied that. And then we're talking about people who, um, uh, want to bring the other uh, into their lives because they want an external representation of either masculine or feminine for their journey. Mm -hmm. And then I imagine there is another uh, part of us that actually embodied within one physical form and created that inner balance operating like yeah. from the vesica pies to space within where you both male and female at the same time. Yeah. I think, I think the important thing is, is, what you received, you know, I, 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 I can speak for myself, for Morgan, I can speak for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Most of the people I know of that are, that are in a powerful conscious union didn't, weren't looking for it. They right. weren't, they, they didn't even want to be in a relationship. So. Right. Uh, but it's an interesting thing what you're bringing up too, which I've been thinking about a lot lately. I talked about it this morning on a, on a, a spirit walk. And that is, you know, it, we can't really understand all of this stuff, but there's something going on with the masculine and feminine. I said, mama's home, daddy's yeah. home. Both of them are home now. It's it's clear and it's right. affecting each and every one of us. I don't care if you're a woman or a man. I don't care. It's affecting each and every one of us. And it's really interesting. But to me, what what I feel is that that it's the impact of it. We're getting used to it, but we're all there. We're all there. It's just a matter of getting used to it. Uh, and I think this is a big step for us now. 
and that's a part of the balance that was coming up everywhere in all of the channels, all of the support and all of the discussions for the Equinox. We did, me and uh, my team like uh, video partner, Alexander Mazone, we did the uh, tarot reading or card reading the day before, a couple of days before the Equinox. And that was coming for that week, the uh, divine, uh, the emperor card representing the divine masculine and the uh, high priestess card representing the divine feminine and the balance within embodying the, the both aspects within one um, image of the world itself as a feeling uh, of both aspects being so strongly present within that nothing is really lacking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, well, I just wanted to speak about this group because I'm really enjoying this whole space uh, with like-minded women who have achieved that uh, within themselves as well and arrived in that space within themselves as well. Maybe it's a transitional space, like you said, where, is, you know. And, and, and I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying what I think the, the value is, where the value is, is what you did. It's, it's not the surface. It's not the actual actions or the words. It's actually getting that information and honoring it and making it happen because energetically the impact of that has a multidimensional impact. It's now starting to starting to show itself in a multidimensional way in this physical experience that we're having. So that's what that's what I'm saying. I'm seeing people do what you're doing, but it seems to be somebody said it the other day. I, I was talking to Morgan Morgan and her friend were talking and they said instant manifestation right. is, is like the manifestation period is like instant now I mean, right. it's like, it just and so we have a part to do with that you know well, no absolutely and so the that balance that balance the you know feminine and the masculine the upper and the lower and the in-between space yeah. that's what you talked about in the dream and i actually had the same exact thing this morning because I had a very powerful meditation at night where I'm in in multidimensional or interdimensional space. I'm somewhere in the galaxy doing some stuff. Then I fall asleep after the meditation and I'm literally in the trenches on earth and or some space where I'm helping people out of war zones and uh, yeah. difficult situations. And I have that responsibility and I keep dreaming about that, that I have that responsibility yeah. to assist in really dramatic and intense uh, situations to lead people out of those situations, out of those war zones. And so I wake up yeah. into my house where it's peaceful and the birds yeah. are outside and it's so quiet. And I, I wake up and I'm thinking this is like an in-between station where I rest. I don't, you know what? This you is know another what, dream in between where I actually I, come to to take a little nap. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? you, but you know, but you know, we've been spent. We have spent so much time trying to get away from the physical. Oh God, yeah. Trying to get away from being human, and I think what you said is 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 the typical incredible paradoxical beauty and profoundness of, of the universe, the way, it, the way it, it actually is. So I look at it like this, that whole, that home, that embodying and, and living the lifestyle, uh, you know, bringing in the balance of physical, non-physical. I think we've gotten to the point where we've actually collectively it's happened. It's landed right. in, in, in an individual. Okay. So now what happens is we go into this dream state which used to be la la land, you know, which used to be, I don't understand. And I think like what you just described is an energetic metaphoric visualization uh, of, of the energy work that you're doing and that we're all doing in the ether. So when you talk about saving people from war zone, I had the same thing happen two, three days ago. I talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a dream Morgan and my, and our families, kids and stuff, helping people, resurrecting people out of a plane crash. I right. think energetically, this is just, telling us what we're doing. And I think right. that sacred space now is the physical, is the divine human yep. being. Oh. And, and that's the way you described it. I, I, that's exactly how I feel. 
I absolutely agree because I think that is exactly the part of the balance. Because when we're too much in the higher centers and all eyes on the multidimensional and metaphysical stuff, then we lose touch with Earth. And we worked on that because we wanted to create that connection very strongly. And now that that connection is developed, I think we're coming full circle to come back down and literally plug back into the earth dimension so that we can elevate it from here from within and so i think the work i'm also i also dream about teaching in like a college like setting teaching young yeah. adults yeah. in the college like setting and today someone wrote on facebook that oh i actually saw you in my dream teaching in in that setting and then i also had people write to me and say yeah i was in the group that you were leading out of uh, like an intense war zone and not even in, on this planet on a different yeah. planet and a different yeah. dimension so it's wild because we're all interconnected and the filters are just not allowing us to see how deeply but the third dimension the earth dimension is very much present within oh, yeah. our experiences very much uh, a part of all of these experiences like it or not so i think when we finally get to embody that too that is a part of the whole uh moving into the state of balance thing yeah yeah and i think too that it actually it's almost like we were held hostage here it's almost like that they captured our consciousness here, they right. or whatever, how, however yeah. we set this up. And now that's being removed. And so not so it's not in this this other star system or this other universe right. or this other parallel life, uh, future or past, where we can uh, pull our, you know, infinite power and, and uh, courage and glory and love from. It's right here. Right. And what happens is when we do things like you did, and even though that may seem like something very superficial, you took mainline infinite intelligence from your from the higher aspects, you put it into motion, and that energetically is healing. That energetic energetically is serving self and serving others at the same time and expanding the universe. And I think we're impacting every dimension and every multiple life that we have from this space. You know? Well, on the human level, the women in the group are sharing that they're really grateful that they finally have the sacred and safe space yeah. where they're not being judged, when where yeah. they don't have to push against the societal norms, where yeah. they can actually express what it is that they feel uh, about the whole thing, and whether and uh, that whether it's temporary or permanent, we don't know because things change really fast. But I know that it, I think that it constitutes a really healing and embracing space, like a healing circle of sorts for women who, whew, you know, everywhere you go, oh, why are you single? Oh, how come you, oh, how come you, oh, oh my God, oh, and, and there's all that feeling. And so women have to defend themselves or they have to uh, excuse themselves or, you, or feel, I don't know, out of place because it's not kind of not considered normal or acceptable to be single and happy, <laughs> you know, but in in the group that i created we are holding that very um conscious human support or very conscious human space that allows girls to just relax and be like dude you know what i sh this is how it is and this is how i want it or this is how it is and this is where i landed and i got some healing to do or whatever but on the human level it's a very healing space and for me too i'm learning like i'm learning girl talk that is not about men which is phenomenal yeah, yeah. <laughs> i never knew that before so yeah. it's really awesome yeah. so <laughs> I just want to make a comment, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to give me an example of that. But uh, uh -oh. but that that safe space you're describing, right? See, see, and coming from the masculine journey, right? You know, right. The, the, uh, that that is that's part of this this coming together of the yeah. masculine and feminine. Oh, huh. you know, that's part of what you're talking about. That that's I think everyone's feeling safer. Right. everyone's feeling safer to talk 
you know, and, and to expose their vulnerabilities and to, and just to be in, and, and, and not feeling suppressed and, and not being, not hiding their right. skills and abilities and their power and their strength and their love. And, and, uh, you know, that's that, I think that's the way this thing's going. The 99.99% we run this world. Now, can you give me, uh, an example of women talk that's not about men? Is that what you said? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even know that that was possible for many years, you know, because girls got together and they all talked about guys, you know, that's it. That was girl talk, but or shopping or something primitive mm -hmm. like that. Here we're talking about finding that inner power or expanding into the gifts or learning about what really self-love is and the expression of it or learning about little uh, aspects of personal freedom you know doing with your body whatever you feel like doing not because mm -hmm. oh is the guy looking am i looking pretty am i looking at yeah. any of that you know that actual enjoyment of hey you know what i'm gonna do whatever i feel like with my body because i'm totally free and everyone every single one i actually put a question there like what do you enjoy the most about being a single or about being on your own and every pretty much every single one said the freedom of my own flow yeah being able to tap into the freedom of your own flow i think this is what everyone is longing for without that you know the static and the interference and yeah. uh what the society said what the husband said yeah. what the parents yeah. want like clear all that clear all yeah. that conditioning and tap into your own flow and yeah. and uh just that yeah. clear mind and clear co connection with the flow i think that's that pretty much was what everyone said in that group that that's what you, they enjoy the most you know amanda lawrence uh our beloved sister put up a post three or four days ago at the same time i was talking about something very similar and some other people were too they were they were talking about boundaries right and and I, at the time i had gotten this download uh, in my walk and i was just and it was like uh unconditional love cannot exist in 3d and I said, what does that mean? You know, and it basically said there are boundaries in 3D because of people's fears, because mm. people infringe on other people and mm. allow people to infringe on their space, so to speak. And and I was shown, not shown, but told, how does this stuff work? That in the 5D, there is a free flow because there is no fear of somebody coming into your space or a collision or, or a mishap. This is all free right. flow energy you know, working, working in a symbiotic relationship or a multiple symbiotic relationship. And I think um, maybe this is part of the transition. Maybe this is what's going to happen. We're going to, and we're, maybe it's already happening. We're having these, these uh, types of get togethers or support groups where people are, are, you know, are saying, I, I like this energy. I like this energy. And this is what I'm going to stay with. And they have the support to do it. And we continue to raise that frequency until it becomes that which, you know, which I, I think we're headed to. I had that notion that that's a space of really learning unconditional love. And you first learn to, as with everything else in our journey, we first learn to, we first, we use ourselves as our own guinea pigs. And so we first practice on ourselves. Yeah. And so if we have first integrated it within ourselves, now we integrate it within the group where we can talk about it uh, from the place of not being embarrassed, or from a place of owning your own, whatever it is that uh, runs your show or, you know, moves your flow or whatever. That's the unconditional acceptance of self. And so it could very well be the space of learning the uh, unconditional love as it is. And I do believe that unconditional love exists on earth uh, or, or is possible on earth. We just. Uh, oh, absolutely. We I, just need I to. Think, absolutely. Yeah. Transform I think, it. Right? Yeah. Or create, I can, I think or create we can, that energy that you're talking about. Right. Right. I think we can create just about anything because we are really powerful we, creators. We can, we can create anything. <laughs> That's all there is to it. We yeah. have created anything. Right. What were you yeah. just talking about? Oh, I saw this post today and it's um, along the same lines of what you're talking about. 
if you, if you, you know, because each one of these is like a, a micro example, right? right. So this is a, a single women's group. This is, you know, this, this is that. Well, Andy Horry, the kid, the, the, the powerful kid, uh, he's been on the show. He's coming on in a couple of weeks uh, from England. Mm. This, this kid's like 22 years old, right? And he's got a girlfriend. He's got a picture. And he says, every relationship should be, you know, should be, uh, uh, you know, the things that should be, uh, you know. And he said, and if it's not, then you, not both one of you or both of you, but you are looking at one or and or the other as a victim. Yeah. And I just went, whoa. Well, you know what? That can apply to every single one to one relationship we have. And yeah. that is, that is, uh, you know, a blockage to that free flow energy that you're talking about, which I love the way you put it, because it is unconditional love. Right. Yeah, I, I absolutely hear that. Well, and expanding the whole subject of balance, right? Mm -hmm. We are, I think we're developing new skills, like we talked the last time, we're developing new skills to be um uh, operational in many dimensions simultaneously and so i heard you i want to ask you a question now i heard you talking about dragons coming in or you mm -hmm. you uh, did you just make a post of it or did you already talk about it because i wanted to actually I, hear about that and <clears throat> maybe uh, you know put my two cents to that yeah i talked i talked about it I, I i i posted it and i talked about it a little bit uh and it's funny you ask me about that because I met with the owner of the property today and I changed back to the place that Morgan and I first came. All right. Oh, I, then, I don't really know. I don't okay. really know the details. So, okay. Could you give us the details? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you the details. Okay. So I'll just start over. So we came here uh, where I'm sitting now, and this was a few weeks ago, and it was the, it, it turned out to be our first home ever, right? Right. So we're in this place on an organic farm. There's a big house. There's like eight cabins and two studios. Uh, but there's one big house that has a common kitchen and has four apartments. So we're in one apartment. We're looking at the ocean from the balcony. We can see the mountain from the side of the balcony. Nice. Okay? And so we're like, oh, my God. And it's affordable. Like a, right. affordability. it's a very, very affordable price. And so so when she left they asked me to move caddy corner to the other side of the building. Huh. Like I'm in this, I'm in the Southeast. They wanted me to move to the Northwest apartment. So I did. And it's nice. And it was done up better and all that. So I get over there and uh, Morgan leaves at the set right after, right before it happened. And uh, so the, that, that energy was different. I'm alone. I'm in this place. So each one of these, these, these uh, upstairs rooms has an octagon window in the center, like center of the bed. So I woke up, this would have been uh, either the 21st or I think it was the 22nd. Uh, I woke up at four, I think, no, 514. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's still dark. And I look out the window and I'd already been through a bunch of intense stuff. Like, I mean, it, like everybody. And right. I saw these 12 dragons appear. 12. Like, like, like this though, like, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Every one of them was a different color. They had a, a different message and power, right? But I got it all. I got it all like I'd watched the movie like for an hour. Right. You know, each one of them taking 10 minutes or something. Right. So then that happened and and I knew something was going on because my whole body started tingling. And then I and I had my um I had my I was laying on the bed because Morgan and I would put our hands together. We when we were here before, we kind of entered this circle of like soul monad or something. And we had some things happen. But I, I just took that position and I could see like her on my left, my grandmother on my right. And then I saw these two figures, one on each side. And one I knew was Magdalene and the one was Yeshua. Wow. And then it all filled up. It all filled up. And, uh, and, and they were like touching my hands, my heart and kissing my forehead. And then my body was tingling really, really intensely, like, but nice. like almost orgasmically. Yeah. And, but I could see the light too. I could see mm -hmm. all the, the light of like just firing off everywhere. And I could, I could say, I, I would say that I levitated, you know, three or four inches or something. So having said that, that's what happened. But, but the, there was a kicker to the story today. So 
I met with the, the owner, manager, and we decided I'll move back to this one. Right now, the one, the other one where this happened is looking over the jungle. Mm. And I made, I made friends with the jungle and the trees and the plants out there. It was very intense and very cool, but it was a different energy. Mm. So, and it was a very intense energy. It was a fast track energy. It was a purifying energy, like Cali, the goddess type energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, dragon. Okay. So that, that gives you an idea. I had some, right. I had some, um, uh, what would you call it? Altered state experiences in that apartment. Mm hmm. Uh, where I saw like through dimension and stuff into another dimension and stuff like that. Right. And so I'm talking to the lady this morning and she says, uh, so how was it over there? She's a really cool lady. She's 84 years old. She's talking about the conspiracy. She's talking about the, uh, the reptilians. I mean, this is, I'm like mind blowing, right? She's like right. on the internet all the time. And so she says to me, you know, I told her what I, I told her a little bit about this. And she said, so what did you see? Did you see something? And I said, yeah, yeah, I did. I saw like these 12 dragons and I saw like Magdalene. I don't even know if I told her dragons. I just said Magdalene and, and Yeshua because I figured, you know, an older lady, she probably could handle that better. I didn't know she was so profound. And then she says, well, most people in there see the Nephilim or the Anunnaki. And I was just like, I was like, oh, I get it now. I get it now. It, 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 it's this whole masculine feminine thing. I was, I, and I was actually having communion in that commun Oh, in that communion that night when the, when the dragons came and, and the divine essences came, I said to them, I said to them, what can I do? And they said, you're already doing it. And I said, no, right. what can I do to further expand? What can I do? I get the game. How do I do it? They said, take those people that you have the most that make you the most uncomfortable and bring them into your heart like three a day you know just just do that just do that so the point is is when that was happening they showed me like this beast like the the darkest most beast looking thing like a, like a i don't know like a reptilian or a nephilim or whatever right and they said what do you feel and i just said compassion and it wasn't like a made up word. It just came out compassion. They said, okay, you got it. Right. And so that was so weird because she said that to me today. Right. <laughs> She's been here 15 years and, and nobody's staying in that apartment. So I don't know if that's the deal, <laughs> but I think the timing of it was, 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 uh, and I think things like this are, are happening everywhere. In fact, yeah. that night too, the last thing that came, which to me, to me was the most, um, I don't want to say impressive, but to me it was like the like the closest thing to my physicality were all these blue dots. Like when I looked when I you know looked up straight ahead, there's a wall you know at the, at the head of the bed. All these blue dots were like they were like blinking and moving, and I know they were like giving me code or something. And it felt extremely galactic. It actually felt like maybe Arcturian. <gasps> wow. Okay, uh, I have a couple of comments here on the whole thing. First of all, so that older lady, she knew that people see stuff in that apartment. That's what she said to me. She wow. said, she said most people. <laughs> and, <laughs> not here, and, and I'm right. like, oh. but I understood it the second she said it. I understood that that I was at one end of the polar, uh, you know, one end of one pole one polarity. And I went to the other one during this equinox, you know, which mm -hmm. was like, you're talking about the balancing, right. the final balancing, the masculine, the feminine, dark and light and all those things. But yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, yeah. On the, on the equinox day, when the whole women's group came up, I was, I was sitting there going, why I feel grounded. I feel so like I just landed so hard on planet earth. Like what's up with that? I'm used to ooh, all of the otherworldly stuff. All of a sudden I'm like feet and all eyes on earth. So that was interesting. But here, I think you, you received an activation considering mm -hmm. all of the, tingles and mm -hmm. the 12 dragons did you actually download that instantly like it was instant but then each one had enough, saw, uh, enough okay, so the, for 10 yeah. minutes each so the dragons because when you look out the window there was no clouds there was just stars and uh i remember looked at i looked at my phone to see what time it was i looked out the window and i immediately saw 
like movement and stuff, but it was not lights. It was like more like energies mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't kind of put your finger on, you know, mm -hmm. and, and then I saw, which I would have to say was third eye. Mm. I saw them go boom, 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 boom. But in those booms, in that little microsecond, I got all the information and I knew that I could go back and plug in, but each one of them represented like, I, I don't know how else to put it, but like, like a virtue. Like a different like, aspect. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, and that's another thing they told me too. I said, I said, what did I say? I said, who are you? I either said, who are you, or who am I? Mm. And they said to <laughs> me, we are you. All right. twelve oh. of us are you. Right yeah. now, now the ones that were on the side of the bed, I saw those with my eyes. Right. And Morgan and I have seen Morgan and I have had that happen a lot, but but the ones in the window. They were they were third eye, I would say. Yeah, that yeah. reminds me of my meeting with the council of my own aspects, where I kept asking each aspect there, "Are you me? Am mm. I you? Are you mm. me?" And then the tingles and the information, the downloads, that tells me that that was an activation that took place for you. The fact mm. that it uh, was in a dragon form might be that you just integrated that whole dimension through the 12 mm -hmm. representations and so mm -hmm. they gave you or you integrated into potentially you you integrated into your physical reality into your physical vessel the yeah. gifts or the abilities associated with which one of these 12 different uh yeah. aspects represented by the dragon the mighty uh the mighty beast you know that's that's mm -hmm. an incredible i have a dragon i have a, i worked with a number of dragons so there is one on my team uh that i work with uh, regularly so that's a great uh asset to have actually integrated the dragon dimension within yourself mm -hmm. um and then about this, the spots or the dots, mm -hmm. I worked with a woman who uh, reached out to me because she wanted to, uh, to understand what's happening. There were like the dots like stars, but more like spots of energy that appeared in her house and were appearing, but they would disappear when other people would come in. And then they continued staying like after some time, she was able to see them and other people were able to see them too. And then uh, when she went into a different place, like a hotel, they would show up there as well. So they yeah. were literally, and I don't quite remember right now which, which dimension that came from, but that was for her because she loved uh, she loved stars her whole life. She was a star child and uh, she was doubting a lot and she was questioning a lot. And, and I don't exactly remember the details of that session, but it came in as a support for her to get her back on track mm -hmm. saying, Hey, you know, we can create the starry sky inside your house and mm -hmm. we're projecting this for you because we're always connected with you. This is your own. Oh, I remember now. So it was her own higher aspect from a different dimension, projecting those back for her human self to, uh, restore her faith or to yeah. assist her in going so it's interesting that you saw that same thing this is the only one uh, one other time when i heard something like that i've, I've heard I, I mean morgan and i have had uh, see last summer we had i know in new jersey we had well, at least one night maybe two nights where we had blue dots but they were on the other wall we mm -hmm. were we had a lot of other stuff going on but then we were like hey you seen that mm -hmm. and they were like, moving around uh, mm -hmm. and i think probably two or three other times, but there are people, there are people, and I was about to say someone's name, but, but I realize now I don't think this person's ever published to my knowledge, the, what I'm about to tell you. And so she, I can think of one lady right now that sent Morgan some videos. I can think of a, another couple of people uh, that I've seen videos in the last two, three years and probably about 10 sets of pictures. Huh. And I'm talking about orbs. Right. And, uh, but this lady that sent Morgan uh, a couple of videos, I know I got to see one at least. And, and, and 
you know, you can, it's so cool because you can hear her. She's filming and the orbs are like going everywhere and she's right. giggling like a little girl. Right. And like they brush up against her and stuff. And uh, so I, I think more and more this stuff is happening. The more we talk about it, the more it's put out there, uh, the more the more uh, activations we're going to have in the form of the codes opening, I guess. Right. I think it's all in us already, maybe. And when those aspects come in, they're basically creating, uh, activating that ability or memories or whatever the case may be. Well, that, I just heard. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, that's what I was getting when I went down the hill today. And that happened about the, the it's going to be like a dream. You know, when I told you that at the top of the yeah. show, yeah. what I got was is that you're actually, and this actually started about three days ago, two or three days ago. I got that you were going, you are, you are going to be totally aware, literally be totally aware of, of all that stuff that's been activated, even though you, you, you're not conscious of it yet, or you don't get it yeah. yet. You know what I mean? And this is how you're going to function. And that, of course, as the individual goes, so goes the collective, you know? And I think your 12 dragon experience has something to do with that uh, activation for sure. You know, it literally, because I do these activations, this type of activations during sessions deliberately, I call in the higher aspects or the aspects that are ready to integrate. We don't choose which one it chooses itself. And we go through the process of an activation, which is basically connecting the person yeah. back to their own original blueprint. And they experience yeah. all of the stuff that you just described. They experience yeah. tingles, they experience um, different sensations or visions of presence, information comes in, and they also uh, find that after those activations, their abilities start coming online gradually yeah. because the human form is slow, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a part of my uh, my process yeah. here. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm recognizing that. That's really uh, amazing and, this, and awesome. Yeah, you know, and, and of course, I've had the luxury of, of working as, as a as the patient <laughs> <laughs> with Morgan for three and a half years. And this is what she's been doing. She does what you do. She's been doing it for, I don't know. She's been, she had her awakening, I think 18, 19 years ago. She's been doing this energy work for about 12 years, I think oh. if I'm not mistaken. And uh -huh. she has a group of uh, like a 20 plus women in South Australia. And, and, you know, I mean, they, this is what they do. I mean, she, she, I remember reading, three and a half years ago or four years ago, whenever it was, when I saw her, uh, her, her profile mm -hmm. and I went to the, the about, and it said, I play in the energy fields. And she, she was speaking this language. I didn't even understand. I, right. and, and the thing that struck me is she was hot. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, what struck me was she said, I don't do anything for you. I show right. you, I take you there. And she's always had this, uh, this rule that three times and that's it, uh -huh. you know, three times, three sessions and that's it. Right. But, uh, so I think, and I think that's another thing too, that's, that's happening. Then you have like a Marita Shashan who does it through a painting or, uh, Gayatri mm -hmm. Singh who does it through those dragon paintings. Or you have people that, uh, like Shakina Rose that does it through harmonic right. uh, light language. Right. And so you have all these different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the more that this stuff again is exposed, the more it's activated in other people. So it's like what might've taken you, you know, say two years might take someone now in this environment, you know, two weeks and, and right. in another month, two days, you know, and in another year, two hours. Right. I mean, it's moving that fast. It's changing and fast. What I heard, uh, I just listened to uh, David Wilcox Q and A on uh, ascension, and uh, what I heard uh, him saying was that the human brain enlarged over the last I don't know hundred years or something like that, or fifty I don't remember, but short period of time that the human brain enlarged the size of a tennis ball. So are we, are we growing, and that's scientifically proven, mm -hmm. you know, that our heads are different shapes now than before, and the brain is different functions than before. And so are we growing like a sonar, like uh, the dolphins did, you know, the dolphins I don't know. I develop mean, that can, with developing abilities. I don't know. When you consider, when you consider that the, it, it's, 
pretty much inarguable that this species were giants at one time. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're actually universal star children. We're, we're, the, we're the mutts of the universe and the multiverse. And this is what makes us so powerful. And I really believe that we, when we get through with this trip, we'll be universal soldier healers that will go to any planet in any galaxy, any universe. And because of our universal codes, you know, cause we have, we have the code of the healing uh, of a healed uh, reptilian. We have yep. the code of a healed Pleiadian. We have right. the code of a healed victim. We have the code of a healed victimizer. Right. We have this incredible multiplicity, uh, the new blueprint. Right. And uh, and I think that's that's what I think that's what we're doing here. That's just my opinion. Well, the Pleiadians call the humans what the living library. Yeah, but I love that what you just said that we have the codes of the healed ones because this is what I always tell my clients when my clients say, "Oh, I don't want to integrate a you know a draconian or reptilian aspect." I say, "Hey, you know there are incredible skills." Oh, I don't want to integrate the Lyran warrior, you know, any of that, but hey there are incredible skills that now with the conscious mind the conscious awareness we can direct in a way that's benevolent and yes. we actually have that opportunity right now because human like consciousness is going up frequency is going up and i think all skills could be uh directed whether to the one side or the other side of the spectrum and if we're able to polarize positively and towards service to self or to service to others versus service to self uh even one percent more than 50 you know 51 percent you 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 uh tip the scale right there okay. and so one foot in 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 the new earth right after that That's and i it. think we've all done done it already well, and, and you know, if you look at, if you look at the multiplicity of, right. of, of, of any of us, okay, the collective us or whatever, uh, and you think about our trip, just in our conscious shared existence that we can all put our finger on, right, and say, mm -hmm. hey, I can prove this, I can prove that. We've we have been on this journey to basic what what, what we've always created, what we put out. Then, right. then the awareness came in that hey, we're creating what we put out. We need to we need to do shadow work. So then the awareness came of okay, now I can manifest what I want. I align in the heart, and here's what happens. And yeah. so, in doing that, we we were taking in more and more of more polarities and more of an expanse between polarities. So we're taking in more love, courage, wisdom, and, and ability to create. And 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 again, this is where we're conscious what I think we're going to become more conscious of is that we're actually actually affecting in all these other places, you know, where we might have been a, a reptilian fighting a Pleiadian or we might've been whatever. Right. Right. And we're bringing that to these other dimensions that we live in. And, and that's why this isn't really, this is, this is to me, the biggest expansion, the universe and opportunity the universe has had to date. Now I have raise seen afterwards. I have seen how that travels through timelines. Mm -hmm. I've had visions when there's a center person who is doing the healing or there's a healing process going on. And as they, uh, let's say, unplug something, let's just say, I don't know, there was a horrific trauma in past incarnation when they were uh, killed, dramatically on on i don't know on the battlefield right and the person is there dying with a sword in their chest and the human in this reality is actually processing that in their dream time or in their uh vision space or in their journey or whatever they're processing that the minute that's healed here it it ripples back into that person and i really i actually did that work with my own self and i experienced that the person on the battlefield had like an apparition they had mm -hmm. a vision of like an of the light and the angelic being showing up looking very different and boom the whole thing is healed and that angelic being is actually being is actually you from this timeline yeah 
because we're in higher dimensional space now. We have evolved from that, let's say, medieval time or, or barbaric time. And so the, the person on the previous timeline would have a vision of mm -hmm. that angelic being, but that angelic being is actually them in the future. Mm -hmm. And the same thing expands farther and farther out where we have, uh, I don't know, whatever is associated with that soul stream or that soul line, everything just ripples out and that entire timeline on in all dimensions is suddenly healed. And I, I was, my question was, oh, do they all see uh, an aspect of themselves that's from like a next dimension? Right. Peek in and they think it's an angel came to heal them, you know, or whatever, you know, but that's, that's themselves. That's great, but that's a great question, you know. I mean, all this time we're referring to these higher timelines, these right. higher dimensional experiences. I think we're in the high one. Yeah, I think I think we're in the we're in the one that's requiring the most work. Otherwise, why would we have ninety nine percent of our consciousness here, right. uh, of our awareness here? I mean, at least in, in, until we pull in more and more of this multi dimensional memories and aspects. But yeah, I, I but think that's what's <laughs> happening. I think I think where the other ones are very much etherical, you know, and you can smell stuff and you can see color and you can hear sound. But in this one, we have a physicality, so we are integrating both worlds i think this is the highest dimension i don't want to go anywhere i want to stay it, here yeah. yeah uh i i kind of envision it in a way that because we have filters in the human dimension right so then yeah. everything else is invisible to us unless we are in a state that allows us to see it, deep deep trance deep meditation and whatever uh but the ones from the higher realms who they actually have access and they can see all the way down to here where they can see us in the human self. So it's connected both in both directions, except the human one doesn't really always have awareness. But we're going more and more into the space where we do have that awareness yeah. nowadays. And I'm yeah. convinced I'm convinced that we can do more with less. In other words, oh. can, because of our experience. The conscious to our to conscious and unconscious to us, but still there because we get triggered. But in the positive way, we, we have this memory or we smell something and it activates something or, or you you uh, convey a story and it activates something in me or whatever, you know, that we can take a little bit of, of that concentrated etheric, you know, uh, I don't know what we would call it uh, code or whatever. And we can we can we bring it in through all our all of our senses and then it becomes ultra sensory, you know, it becomes like a broadcast. And I think that's what's happening. It's like the hundredth monkey thing on right. cosmic steroids. <laughs> like, 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 like it's happening. It's happening at such a rate now that, that almost all we can do anyway is just go with it and be it. You know? Right. Well, this yeah. is so funny. You said that, <laughs> but the, a lot of, a lot of, the more advanced ones uh, in the human community uh, say that, well, we don't even do any procedures anymore. We activate each other just by eye contact yeah. or by sitting in the same room. And that is true to a certain extent for sure, you know? And so I think we're all going into the space because we are sharing consciousness. We're sharing consciousness like it or not. And so the higher their frequency, uh, the more people they influence, the and the people it ripples out all the way through uh, to the most uh, to the most unconscious person too. That's and right. with the most unconscious person, if they happen to be in the environment, that environment, they start hearing words. They start hearing, oh, what is all this people? What are all these people talking about? They might be making jokes about it, like oh, whatever. But it leaves an imprint in the brain and so the brain starts seeking out that information and next thing you know that person is on the on the awakening journey and so there's no stopping it here on earth nowadays uh that's it we have you know we have tipped the scale we're forward and on full on uh yeah ascension full on and yeah. disclosure disclosure is coming also yeah, apparently see, 
that's mm-hmm. go ahead go ahead go ahead so apparently we're living in the uh, well we we, we kind of heard about it that we're in the holographic universe right that everything is just the projection and then right if i put my hand right through my wall like wall right there through the mountain there are all this technological technologically advanced society right there that yeah. earth already has all of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're like yeah. star Trek kind of thing well yeah. i you know that and that's coming up a lot and starting to come yeah. up on this show a lot in fact i was watching i was uh, moving today and i was listening to some interviews actually the 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 84 year old lady <laughs> that told me about that. <laughs> she said hey you've got to watch this guy and i'm not i'm not going to mention the name yet because i'm still checking him out a uh, whistleblower I never heard mm-hmm. of him. I do. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I used to research a lot. I still stay on top of it, mm-hmm. but I, but I don't, not a lot of it resonates. It just, it doesn't, it just doesn't register it, but uh, I was watching it. So it, I'm going to go after two, three people like this mm-hmm. that are fresh out of right. it. And, 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 and just to put that information out there so we can all discern, but, but that's coming out more and more. My take on it is this. I trust me and you. I trust the 99.99%. I trust my brothers and sisters. I, I believe we're we're running this thing now. We control this thing now. The rest of it's a narrative. So I'm not going to get hung up on QAnon or Trump or, or white hats supposedly in the government or spaceships landing. I'm not. Uh, or technology yeah. being introduced tomorrow. If it's sold to me as a story, I'm going to be the last person to walk across the line. Right. Because that's all we've ever been told with stories. Yeah. Know? I mean, and yeah. so, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I think we continue to do what we're doing, no matter what they do, they, no matter what it looks yeah. like on the collective global stage. If we keep doing what we're doing, then it's going to externalize. No, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So there's, that takes all the thinking out of it. That takes all the protest yeah. out of it, boycotting, marching. Yeah. And it, it, you know, uh, preaching in terms of you know yeah. you got to eat vegan and you got to do this and you got to. Hey, I ain't got to do nothing. I came <laughs> here. I'm a, valley, I'm a valiant soul, just like you. I came here. Every one of us earned the right to be here, and this is an honor to expand Mother Universe, and that's what we're doing. So yeah. yeah. That's what I, like I hear you, and I'm not into. I think that we each one of us has a purpose or our own piece of this puzzle and i know it's not my piece to be focused on i don't know conspiracy theories and all of the stuff that you just mentioned earlier i actually when i start when i start hearing people talk about it i usually turn that off you know if, if it yeah. comes up on online and people start talking i just move on because i feel no uh need to have that information in my mind or yeah. in my energy field at all i feel that i yeah. know very specifically what i'm here for and that's not a, what i'm here for i yeah. think that there is a specific level of groundwork that you you're doing and i'm doing and we're connected to our own uh flow our own mission to do just that and Absolutely. let you know let Absolutely. the ones the ones who are supposed to be dealing with conspiracy theories, let them do that. But it's not me. So, yeah, yeah. I agree totally. I, I, you know, I woke up here over the last two, three days and I said to myself, OK, uh, I'm in a divine conscious union. I have a house. I have a car. <laughs> I love what I do. Right. Uh, I've got enough money to get by. Finally, everyone seems to be prospering. Everything seems to be aligning. I don't need to think about anything else. I know. All I need to think about is, is uh, like creating the energy in the space that I'm in. What's one thing I learned from Morgan, you know, like, you know, you create the energy, you put your imprint on it and just staying in this, this little circle of universal, but in infinite abundance. And, 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 and that's my part and that's your part. And that's what you're, that's what you're getting at. We just do that. Cause everybody that pretty much everybody that, that, uh, that that's in our circles, if you will, they're coming into a mission. Yeah. They're getting it. They're getting clear clarity on what they're, what they're to do because it's what they want to do, what they align with their heart aligns with. And there's that, that message that I think so many of us have gotten to that says, 
this is what you're going to be doing in a few years. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, actually happening now. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it links us in this on a certain level also with uh, cosmic uh, uh, origin. I'm actually about to put out or record a video on predis like predisposition towards specific activity on Earth yes. based on uh, the cosmic <laughs> origin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right there. Yeah. yeah. And, and that com compartmentalizes us a little bit. I mean, we're involved in this whole movement together as a shared consciousness, but I think that we're supporting the grid in a way uh, that produces the positive energy or produces the foundational energy towards others and others have other functions and other things to do. And it's very clear because when I work with people and we, it's it's obvious that the occupation as a light worker or whatever they're doing here is directly linked to the lineage of the soul that they are most connected to at this time and this can change and this can switch and this can morph going yeah. forward but whenever they work with me the the link is very clear and if they come back to me and work to, with me two years later and they upgrade to the next level then that might change too but it's there's logic to the system the I universe the universe does not make mistakes as far as mm. everyone has their own place yeah. within this whole yeah. structure within this whole grid yeah. i agree and i agree with what you say too i think the star family part of it the galactic part of it is like the closest past we have you know, yeah. that's just how, that's just how I feel about it. But I do see where not only do certain uh, star lineage, con, you know, configurations or, or paths or whatever, lifetimes or whatever uh, of an individual fractal, they have certain, certain characteristics. Yeah. Right? Influence, and, and, yeah, for sure. Yes. So as far as like what type of mission or what their specialty is and that type of thing, which you could actually probably tie to astrology and all that stuff. But yeah. But, uh, but at the same time, I also see in those characteristics certain lifestyles, certain right. preferences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, you know, I'm from the side of the universe that likes to eat a hamburger. <laughs> 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 oh my god but, oh my god you're not vegan people shoot. are gonna freak out people are but, gonna stop following your show you just said it out loud i had people no. unfriend me i had people unfriend mm -hmm. me and unfollow me because i said that i was eating meat but well now i don't but i go yeah. back and forth sometimes i do sometimes i don't i haven't for a while but it was a time when i did and people were mm -hmm. like oh we can't possibly follow listen to what she has to say because she just ate something you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's just something I noticed. I noticed yeah. it, it, and I, you know what? Actually, when I, if I, if I had to look back at the first uh, inkling or memory or, or uh, recognition, if I really have to, and I thought about this the other day, uh, it, it would be when I was a kid of galactic, okay, of of, of something beyond human. Because I remember as a kid seeing different people and, and saying, okay, they're from that group and they're from that group. And it did not correlate to ethnicity. Right. I would look at yeah. these people and, and it was like something in their eyes, you know? So well, I don't know, something just, in, the, in their eyes that's visible. I'm trying to move back into the light because the sun is going down and it's pretty, and it's pretty dark. So <laughs> like I'm te te my tell us about, uh, you're okay. Don't worry about that. Yeah, tell us about tell us about the uh, now. You were at the yoga one, right? Because there was like two yes. or three different ones over there, right? Yep. Okay. There I am. So I I, I know Susie Byler was there, yeah. right? And oh, uh, the yoga she, festival was yeah. really oh, there we go. We can see me now. Yeah. All right. So the yoga festival was really incredible because um, it brings this specific yoga festival is not really focused on uh, all of, it's not really focused on just yoga or just mm -hmm. uh, teachings from India. It yeah, brings remember. together people from all walks of life, 
Yeah. It's a consciousness. It's a conference. What's it called? Consciousness expansion conference or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they have workshops of all mm -hmm. different kinds and they have different speakers that represent different cultures, different religions, yeah. different yeah. belief systems. Um, I was on a panel with uh, someone who is a timekeeper from uh, the Mayan, Mayan tribe of sacred timekeepers. And he talked about timelines and he talked about uh, 2036 being a big deal. And mm -hmm. um, I don't really know enough about it to repeat what he said, but it's another thing that is being expected. Like uh, the 2012 was a big uh, turnaround yeah, point. I'll be 75 by then. I better be looking like 33 year old Jesus by then. I'd be out. I'd be gone because <laughs> I actually made a, a soul contract to, well, I, I made a soul contract to check out in my sleep at 65. So that actually is at exactly 2036, which really? I did not realize that until they started talking about, oh, that's an event when uh, everything, whatever uh, comes to fruition and in on earth. And then I counted and I said, hey, well, you know, this is exactly the time when I am actually checking out of this mission it's because that's, this is, I don't know, you said you want to stay. This is my final Same, incarnation. <laughs> I want to see, I want to, I want to be teleporting. I want to, I want to alchemize things right in front of my face. I want to, I want to see what we can do with this guy. I read a great quote uh, today. Oh my God. It was so good. I'm not even going to try to repeat it. <laughs> we have to it. <laughs> that good. Huh? But it, was, <laughs> but it, was, it was said it was, it was by Jim Morrison. Uh -huh. Somebody put it on. Somebody put it on a comment on one of my posts. And, uh, but it was said in such a poetic, powerful, sacred, beautiful way. And basically he was just saying, he was saying that something to the effect of, uh, you know, there is no, almost like there, from the eyes of the gods and goddesses, are like you know, th there is nothing greater than, than being and creating and living in this, in the moment, you know, in the, in the sacredness of the moment. And it just struck me, I'm going to find it and repost it. But, All um, right. but I think that's it. You know, I think that the memories have served us, the, you know, Activation service still do um, all that stuff, all, all that stuff, you know, even the lineage we were talking about, the galactic lineage we we're talking about, it all served us. It's not vital to right. us anymore. What's vital yeah. is the, the like you said, uh, a higher aspect coming in and activating the human aspect. Right. And so I think we have enough information. There's enough of a beehive intelligence now. Information is moving back and forth, physically and non-physically, you know, visually and non-visually. That that it's we can now focus on on this this experience itself and actually bring in the miracles and the magic and the alchemy and the healing to the to the world. You know, because I don't think I there's think any of us that doesn't want to heal the world. Right? Yeah, everybody wants to. Well, yeah, I don't know about that. Does everybody want to? I I think when when everybody does want to, this is when we have arrived. I think well, I that think, means that yeah. we've we've had the global awakening, and yeah. that that's the turning point. Maybe twenty thirty six, or maybe twenty thirty six. Whatever. I don't like well, timelines. I, I don't like dates. Twenty nineteen. Let's do it now. Yeah. <laughs> sooner the better. I think this ball's in All our right. court. I yeah. think anything that's been prophesized in anything like that is an energetic kind of like going to get a fortune, mm. you know, or, or having your cards read or whatever the case right. is in that moment. This is your reality. This is your trajectory. Right. But as soon as the task for many, I think yeah. being conscious of the fact that we are that powerful, powerful Absolutely. beyond measure Absolutely. Absolutely. as creator beings on earth moving from uh, the space of survival into the space of creation. That's the meaning of uh, awakening. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I, th I think you should lobby for a, a renegotiation of your soul contract. No, I did that. I did that uh, in full consciousness. I actually had my question was uh, how to interrupt the uh, reincarnation cycle. And yeah. so I was told that I have worked off uh, pretty much almost all of the karma uh, that I carried into this incarnation and that you know captain your your if you you have a permission to check out of this uh, specific operation at the end of this uh, cycle and so yeah and uh i requested that the end of my cycle is at 65 and mm -hmm. i know exactly how it's going to be so i had the whole i had the whole you know like uh, i'm not going to compare program. myself you basically programmed it. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be compared to whatever, but you know that the monks and, and Tibetan cultures and stuff, they can time their own death. That's the level of the level of activation of the human brain. Even even the movie Lucy that I love talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. He says, that was a good movie. Morgan had me watch that one. Nice. Yeah, that that, that you that you can time your own death, right? It men it's mentioned that, that it's a certain level of, of cerebral, whatever, brain capacity. And uh, yeah, I programmed it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. Mm. It's, I um, know, because I know, I know where I'm at after that. It that's feels good. amazing I mean, there. Just, no, you're, per yeah, I mean, I'm, I just, there was a time I wanted to go. You know, now I had there's been many centuries. times I wanted to go. <laughs> I, I had like, centuries. Oh, uh, yeah. Centuries of incarnations. I've been here for so long on this planet. Uh, it's it's like done I think I, was, with, you know? I think I came I came in as a single cell organism like a protozoa or amoeba. <laughs> I've been here I've been dirt, I've been everything, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get what you're saying. All right, so we got to get together again. Okay. Uh, is there anything you want to tell everybody? How well, can they I just find wanted you? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention that next week we have Girl Talk on camera, Facebook Live oh, with wow. uh, um, Alexandra of I already forgot the name, but I will post it. That's a that's an interview that me me and Alexandra are doing uh, together uh, on April first. I'll post about it. We got April Cosmic 12th. Awakening coming up uh, April 12th, 13th, 14th, <clears throat> where I'm opening and I'm giving the meditation. And oh, talking that, about <clears throat> that's in Sedona. Is that Suzanne Ross's deal? No, oh. Suzanne Ross has just passed. That was for uh, the Equinox. It's, Who, it's who's, who's doing Cosmic Awakening? Is that uh, uh, Thunderbeat? Thunderbeat Divara. Uh, oh is, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, 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 Suzanne is is in that conference, but Thunderbeat is doing. Hers is, is called uh, something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, go ahead. And now you and, said that is next Saturday is the first, or is it Sunday? No, the first is next Monday. Monday. Okay, so next Monday, you're doing I, a live girls talk. I, I'm going a live girls talk, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, oh, it's interesting. Like. That. Should we should we wear our pajamas and we're gonna watch? <laughs> yeah, for the girl the talk. Pillow sure. fights and stuff. Look at me, I, I'm like half in the light and half in the dark. This is so cool. Um, okay, and then uh, cosmic awakening, and also I'm booked with sessions all the way until May now. But if you would like to have a session, you can reach me at isabellagreen.com. I do activations. I do. Uh, soul journeys. I help you uh, find your path and your purpose, and also clear entities. I work. I do um, intricate and very high-end um, entity work. So that's my thing. And you and I, Todd, are gonna do some more, right? Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, I'm hoping to uh, get on the schedule today. <laughs> nice. I can't yeah. wait much longer. I knocked out a, like it's like a week ago. I I went through like uh, probably 150 messages, right? Oh man! So hope, and and yeah. I thought, wow, I got all this stuff done, but uh, no, I still got a lot more to do. So I'm gonna try to do that today. Uh, you know, the best I can. Okay. I think I think tomorrow we've only got two 
I need a little, I need to slow down a little bit for two or three <laughs> days and load it back up. You know, I, I just, all right. Uh, so I'll be in touch uh, about what we talked about earlier for, for the schedule. And then, yeah, 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 that. And, and also I'm going to, I'm going to talk to Morgan. We're going to connect later uh, in. Uh, so, cause there's a friend of ours. I don't want to mention any names. A uh, very, very uh, long established friend of, of the community that uh, right. we're thinking maybe to 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 do something in uh in the sedona area nice uh, oh that'd so be we, there's awesome. enough yeah there's enough friends in sedona mm -hmm. and and maybe just uh, or maybe i don't know uh just anyway it was brought up to me and, and uh, it's, if it's feasible it's feasible excellent or, or maybe we can see what kind of interest we can get all right okay you take care it's so nice right. watching you with your with the light in the dark. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my whole face in the, in the yeah. light. We'll get, we'll, we'll get in touch with you, or either I'll get in touch with you or Morgan get in touch with you, and we reschedule. I, I do it right now, but I don't have the calendar with me. Don't worry you, about it. We'll you be take in care. Touch. Thank you. Take thank care. You thank you so much. Thank you, Todd. All right. All right. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.